forgot that I wanted to get this video filmed today, which is Tuesday, so you can be watching it uh, in the future on Thursday, which is like two days from now, but when you're watching it, it is Thursday now, so isn't it amazing how YouTube works? Anyway, this is going to be my review on the Kat Von D Monarch palette. This was also released in conjunction with the Chrysalis palette. These are available at Sephora. This is the warm toned one and the Chrysalis one is a cool toned one. So you are going to get warm colors in here as opposed to the cool toned ones you would get in the Chrysalis palette. It's kind of a duh thing. Um, I did use this on my eyes today and then my Saturday video, if I actually remember to upload on Saturday, and my Tuesday video are going to be two different style tutorials using this palette. I'm sure there'll be more because it's Kat Von D and I love her. We all know this. So the Kat Von D Monarch palette will cost you about $46 and some change with tax. Um, in here you get 12 different shades of eyeshadows, nine of them being like regular size and then three being these larger, um, neutral shades, I guess we'll call them. Um, so yeah, and you do get a quite large mirror in here as well. The packaging is quite sturdy. It is just a cardboard packaging and it does have a magnetic closure. Um, but it is very thin and it is quite compact, so I feel like this would be great for traveling. The mirror is quite heavy duty. Again, you're going to have to prop it if you really care. Um, that's not something I care about in palettes if the mirror stands up or not. But it is quite bulky and I do feel like, not bulky in a bad way, but I feel like bulky to where it will protect the eyeshadows that are inside of it if you travel with it. Um... Not to mention, look at this beautifulness here, this gilded butterfly on the front, and then you've got the gilded butterfly wings on the back with all of the shade names. And on Sephora's website, if I can get to it here, unlock my phone, let's try this again. It's basically just tells you, like, you get warm shades, three larger base shades, different, nine different accent hues, that kind of stuff, just hitting the highlights here. And then it has antioxidants, rose extract, and vitamins A, C, and E in all of the eyeshadows. And this helps to keep the skin of, on your eyelids and under your eyes hydrated. Or like wherever you are placing these eyeshadows, it's not going to dry out the area like some powders can. And that's something I really like about her eyeshadows. Um, it, I think that makes them more creamy. But it does kind of, I think, lend to the fallout aspect as well. And there are parabens, sulfate, and phthalates. I don't, I don't know that word. Uh, free. So there's not bad stuff in it. And the inspiration behind it is the transformation of a butterfly. I don't know if you really care about that, but yeah. So again, just really quickly to hit on the packaging some more. It's beautiful, it's functional, and I think... Just, I love that she puts so much time and effort into the packaging of her products. For me, it could be in a plastic black case like this, and I would buy it knowing that the quality of the products is as good as it is. Um, but like I said, you do get a large mirror in here as well, which is nice because I can hold it up in front of my face and see both of my eyes at the same time, which really helps to create evenness on both eyes so you're not like blending too high or too low it, it just makes it help it's just helpful um then in here you have nine like crease shades or other colors you can use I think you could use any of these on the lid or all over the eye it just depends on what kind of look you're trying to create but then you do have these three um neutral everyday kind of shades as well and let's start swatching and seeing what we have here. So this first one here is called Etymology. And it is a creamy beige kind of color. It's not necessarily a cream, but it is, um, it's got a brown shade to it, which is really nice. It does also have glitter in it, but I don't think that the glitter would really show up on the lid. But I think it gives it a little bit something else rather than just a traditional 
matte kind of look, you know, that can be kind of flat and I think the glitter helps make it stand out a little bit. Then in the middle here you have Telepathy, which is a very beautiful taupe shade. Um, swatch that there. And it is a satin finish and it is quite shiny. There is something different about her satin finishes than anybody else, any other company's satin finishes, I think. Like, she just does something different to hers that make them kind of stand out in a very oversaturated makeup world. But anyway. Then next to that, you have Tiny Death, which, first of all, that is my favorite name in the entire palette of any palette I have. Tiny Death. I don't know why I like it so much, I just do. But it is kind of a creamy yellow kind of buttery shade. It's very nice. I do have it on today as my brow bone highlight. It's pretty much the same color as my skin once you blend it out. Like I do said, I do have it on here. I also have a little bit of etymology just on the right... Let's try this again. So I do have a little bit of etymology just right under my eyebrow at the highest point of my brow bone. Um, and I also have both of them on the inner corner as well. So now to talk about the interesting colors in the palette. Not that these aren't nice and pretty, but these are interesting. Um, this first one here is called Deadhead and it is kind of a burnt orange color. It's very pretty and very pigmented. Now mind you, I am swatching these over bare skin. I have no primer or anything like that on my arm. That is just a swatch on bare skin. So it is super pigmented and this is actually the color that drew me to this palette um, and actually made me purchase this one over the Chrysalis palette which has more like blues and purples in it. But I really loved this orange shade. Um, and then next to Deadhead you have Shadow Box. Oh, before I move on, this is kind of the same idea as Etymology. It is a matte shadow with glitter in it. So it's going to look matte on the eye, but up close it's going to have a little bit of glitter, which is just going to make it look a little bit different when you're looking at your makeup. And like I said, I like that effect again as I blind you. So anyway, next is Shadow Box, which is a satin finish, and it's just kind of like a chocolate brown color. That's what it looks like blended out. There it is. It does have some gold shine to it. It is a very, very pretty color. Again, all of these I think are pretty. Um, next you have a gold called Disintegration, and it is just a very warm toned gold. There's nothing crazy going on with it. It's not super yellow. It's not super orange. It's just gold. And I think it is a very pretty color. Then moving on to this one here. This is called Vanish and I have it on as my main lid color. It is kind of a pinky peach shade but with more of an orange undertone almost. That is it right there. I'm sorry about my cut up finger. I accidentally sliced my finger at work on Sunday and had to go get five stitches. I've been trying to keep it off camera, but sometimes I just can't. So anyway, that is Vanish. It is this peachy pink color that kind of shimmers gold. It's also a satin finish um, and I really like it. Then next to Vanish you have Delaney which is kind of a gunmetal taupe. It's a very different color. Um, it is definitely a in the taupe family, but it is like this very pretty uh, like gunmetal color. It's also a satin finish. Um, then next to that you have Killing Jar, which is a matte. And this reminds me of Naked from Urban Decay, which was originally in the original Naked palette. Um, and it's very creamy and super pigmented and I really like it. Um, so that is it there. And for a matte shadow to go on that smoothly and not be patchy 
without a primer underneath it, I think is amazing and she should pat herself on the back. Then next to that you have the color Summerfly, which again is a satin finish. Um, and it is just a darker brown, but when you blend it out, it actually looks a little bit lighter than Shadow Box. So here is, uh, what did I call this? Summerfly. So you have Summerfly and then you have Shadow Box. So this one's actually a richer chocolatey brown and this one's just more of kind of a bronzy taupey brown. Then the last two shadows in this palette are matte. You have a dark matte brown, which is called Papillo, which uh, is a very pigmented brown again. Very pretty, not quite as smooth or as creamy as Killing Jar, but still a very good quality matte shadow. Then I was super happy that she threw a very dark... Uh, matte black in here as well because it never hurts to have a matte black shadow in anything. So like I said it is very pigmented and again it's very creamy for a matte shadow. Um, but it's kind of like she didn't have a matte black in the spellbinding one. She had kind of a charcoal color which wasn't as dark but this dark is super pigmented and super black. Again, here are our, all the colors. So you have Deadhead, Shadow Box, Disintegration, Vanish, Delaney, Killing Jar, Summerfly, Papillo, and Wrath. And they are all just very pretty, super pigmented. And again, this is swatched over bare skin. So. For these to swatch like this over bare skin is just amazing to me. Her shadows are actually formatted to where you can wear them over your bare skin on your eyelid without a primer, and they're supposed to stay all day. I, however, have found that if I don't wear a primer, any eyeshadow creases on me. It doesn't matter what eyeshadow it is, so I always wear a primer or some kind of base with any eyeshadow, not just these. But these you are supposedly able to wear without a primer and they will last and stay all day. And just to show you, just with a makeup wipe, they come right off. There is no staining whatsoever with these colors, um, even this kind of orangey one. There's no staining at all. Yeah, they come right off, which is nice because I know sometimes when you get a lot of pigmentation in a shadow, it just stains so badly and you can't really get it off for a little bit and that's that is irritating. But these don't do that, which is very nice. So you get very high quality eyeshadows that come off very easily, but look amazing all day long. Um, and I just have to say that I applied this eyeshadow at, I want to say like 10 o'clock this morning. It is now almost 8 o'clock at night, so like 10 hours later, and it still looks exactly how it did when I applied it this morning. There's no creasing, no smudging, no moving, nothing. And that is everything I could ask for and more in an eyeshadow. So now that I have rambled on for like 20 minutes at this point, um, bottom line is this is a great palette and if you guys are looking for something different than the Naked palettes or any other neutral palette that is out there that is trying to copy the Naked palette, or you just want different neutrals, I think the Monarch palette is definitely something to look into. These kind of colors are completely in my wheelhouse. I love these kind of colors. So it is very good quality makeup and I think it's worth the price because you are getting such quality product. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button if you found this helpful. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.